Welcome to the worship services at our church, Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church. The fourth Sunday of Easter, Sunday, May 3rd, 2020. Good morning and welcome to our online worship service here at Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church. Our order of service today uh, can be found, uh, it'll show up on the screen in front of you as we're worshiping. Otherwise, uh, just below, if you're on our webpage, you'll find a button that will have our service bulletin that you can download with also the scripture readings on there. There's another button if you would like to read along with a copy of the sermon. And the third button there is if you would like to give an online offering. Order of service today, though, is the common service, and we begin with our first hymn, Spread, O Spread the Mighty Word. May God bless your worship this morning. Continue with the response of reading. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. This morning we rejoice to worship our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Good Shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word, that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the scripture readings. The word from God's prophet this morning is from Acts chapter 6, selected verses. Stephen preaches to the people. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, 
Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue, of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews from Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provenance of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. The word from God's apostle today is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19-25. through 25. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it, this is commendable to God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. The word of the Lord. The word from God said today our gospel lesson is from John chapter 10 verses 1 through 10. This will also serve as our sermon text. Very truly I tell you Pharisees. Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. 
but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The word of our Lord. We continue now by confessing our united faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There, there's been a lot of talk recently about essential jobs. Let's, let's talk about being essential. It, it's, it's debated all over the place. Maybe our definition of what is essential has been changed over the last couple of months. Maybe being labeled as essential or non-essential has kind of affected the way that you and I feel about ourselves. If you're one of those people that has an essential job, meaning during the last six or seven weeks, you haven't had any hours cut, you wake up, you go to the same job, you do pretty much the same thing at your workplace, that there might be a part of you that has a little bit of pride. Wow. You know, I am essential. It's not just that I do a job to earn money, but my community, the people around me rely on me. I am contributing in some way. 
Although the, the opposite might be true, that if your hours have been cut, that if you have been furloughed, that if you have been laid off, that something can start to creep into my mind thinking to myself, wow, I'm, I'm not essential. The, the job I am doing now doesn't matter as much as I thought it did. And, and that can start to have a negative self-value if, if you're defining yourself by your job. And I, don't, I don't know if there's going to be a migration after this is all done from jobs that are considered essential or from jobs that are considered non-essential over to jobs that are considered essential. But, but I want to talk to you about how essential you are. Not, not, not because of the job that you do. Because there's a case to be made, I mean, we wouldn't be here in Las Vegas sitting in the desert in 110 degree heat for the next four months if it wasn't for all of these quote-unquote non-essential jobs of hotel and restaurants and gaming industry. All of those jobs are essential for our community. But the real reason that all of you listening to this are essential is because that is how your God sees you. And in order to take kind of a deeper dive into that, we're going to look at one job that is very essential for us. The job of being a shepherd. Now, I don't know a lot about being a shepherd. I've actually never shepherded actual sheep one day in my life, so I don't know how it works too much, but did some research, studied into it, look at it, and, and I want us to better understand the idea of God being our shepherd. Because most of us are familiar with the idea of God being our shepherd. The God of the Bible describing himself to us as our shepherd. We, we, we teach our children from a very young age, I am Jesus, little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. For my shepherd gently guides me, knows my needs and well provides me, loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. Just that very common and comforting hymn that we're singing in today's service, right? I am Jesus, little lamb. And even if someone hadn't grown up learning that song, even if someone had never cracked a Bible in their life, they probably know of the psalm that we read today. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. God describes himself to us as a shepherd. And the account that we're looking at today is in John chapter 10. And this comes right on the heels of of a story that we looked at a couple of months ago, the, the, the account of Jesus going into a town and healing a man who was blind from birth. Now this man had never seen anything in his life, and he's, he's a middle-aged man, and Jesus comes to him, and he heals him of his blindness. And, and this man goes to the church, and the church finds out that Jesus has healed a man of blindness. But rather than rejoicing with this man that now he can see, rejoicing with his family for what God has done for him, they launch an investigation. It's a real conspiracy trying to hide the facts of who Jesus really is. And they interview the man's parents, they interview the man, and eventually when the man finally says that Jesus is a prophet, they kick him out of the church. They say, you're no longer welcome here. Jesus goes and he, he finds the man and he comforts him and he lets him know that he has talked to Jesus, the, the Son of God. And then we have John chapter 10. Jesus goes to the Pharisees and talks to them. I'd like to read for you this morning the verse that we're really going to focus on, the first five verses of John chapter 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, 
because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. That those Pharisees, those teachers, those leaders of the church who were supposed to be leading people towards God and helping the shepherd, they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. I don't want that to be the same case for you. So let's talk about being a shepherd at the time of Jesus. So if you're a shepherd at the time of Jesus, during the day, right, you're taking your sheep uh, to, to nice meadows and you're leading them beside quiet waters, you're protecting them. But at night, you, you might have to sleep. And what they would do is maybe if you're all alone by yourself, a long ways away from a, a nice place, you, you build up a little wall and you sleep at the gate. But if you were by an established town or, or an established shepherding community, it's possible that they would have a large sheep pen. And the walls would be built up nice and high so that animals couldn't jump over the top and get into the sheep. When the sheep couldn't get out, there'd be a nice strong gate to protect the sheep while they were in there. The shepherds could take turns and shifts sleeping throughout the night. We have an example of this right in Luke chapter 2. There were shepherds watching over their flocks at night, and the angel of the Lord came to them on the night that Jesus was born. And, but what happens is, if an angel doesn't wake you up and tell you to go to Bethlehem, the morning would come. And in the morning, a shepherd would walk to the gate. The gatekeeper would let him in, and you'd have this pen full of all of the shepherds, multiple shepherds' flocks. And what would the shepherd do? He would call to his sheep. He knew them by name. He called them out of the fold, and his sheep followed him. That shepherd knew which sheep were his. He wasn't going to leave any behind. He was going to take out all who were his because he loved them and he cared for them, and he was going to take them out of that fold and lead them to good places. And the sheep were going to follow because they knew the voice of their shepherd. They knew that he was going to protect them in the day. They knew he was going to lead them to a place where they could feed. They knew he was going to lead them to a place where they could drink and, and have green pastures. And it would be better to follow that shepherd. So all the other sheep would stay behind, but his sheep would go out. And this man that had just been healed of his blindness, who God had called and said, don't stay with that fold. Don't stay among those people who have no interest in worshiping the one true God. Follow me. This would have been something extremely comforting for him to hear. But for those Pharisees, to those leaders of the church launching that investigation and, and trying to keep Jesus away, they were proven. They were just thieves and robbers. There were people that were not going through God, but they were going into his church and trying to take people away from God, trying to hurt and harm others so that just they could profit off of God's flock. It's been that way for a long time in the church. That there are still people out there that we have to watch out for. That, that, that claim to be working for Jesus, to be working for him, but really just want to profit off of God's church. Which is why it's so important for us to know the voice of our shepherd, to know the voice of our God, to get to know him better. Jesus calls you all the time. Jesus calls you every time we open his Bible and we read his word you and I start to better know his voice. Better know the voice of our shepherd who is leading us to, to places of peace that no one else in the world knows how to lead us. Now, now there are different techniques of being a shepherd. right? Sometimes when I, when I think of a shepherd, I think of more of a cowboy. I think of a cowboy being at the back there or walking and having the big shepherd's crook to the sides and kind of driving his sheep along, maybe having some 
border collies or Australian shepherd dogs running up the side so you can round all the sheep up and get them to go to the right place, driving them, moving them, forcing them to go the direction that you want them to go. It's not the way our shepherd works. He stands in front. He calls you. And we follow him. Just a gentle voice. A gentle voice speaking to you, not with some great grand gesture, not with a whip behind you, but just a voice saying, follow me. And sometimes we're going to follow him through some really dark valleys. Sometimes we're going to follow him like we are right now through, through this really tough path that, that we're not even sure what's on the other side of this steep incline as we go up this tough mountain. The thing is, though, our shepherd knows where he's going. Our shepherd knows where he is leading us. Our shepherd has called you and is leading you because you are essential to him. He knows your name. He doesn't want to leave you behind. He keeps calling you over and over again. Because he loves you. He has purchased you with his blood. He has called you by name through baptism. He speaks to you through his word over and over and over again so that you will continue to follow him. You're essential to him not because of your job. You're essential to him not because of what you contribute to the flock. You are essential to him because you are his little lamb who he loves so very dearly. And that's the truth. And, and he's, of course, essential to us. We need that shepherd to lead us and guide us. We need that shepherd to take us to places that, that we didn't even know would be the best place for us to go. We need him to cause us to lay down in these green pastures and take a break and relax and rest and see our God for how great and how wonderful he is. We, we, we need him. Just think about where we'd be without him right now. Where would you be without your God right now in this difficult time? We'd be left having to listen to all the other voices that are out there. We'd be left having to trust only, only in the words of politicians or economists or financial advisors or, or experts in many other fields. And while all of these people, we, we trust that God has put in these positions of authority to take care of us and love us, they're human. They don't always know what's going to happen tomorrow. Your good shepherd does. He knows what he is doing. He is in control of all things. He is protecting you. He is watching out for you. He cares for you. You are essential to him. He calls you because he wants you to give you, he wants to give you life and give it to you to the full. And one day you and I are going to realize that completely. When we are in heaven, and we are surrounded by God's entire flock, and enjoying the goodness of God. But during this life, He wants to give you full life as well. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you forgiveness of sins. He wants to take away from you your anxiety and your loneliness and your doubt and your guilt and just give you quiet times of peace with just you and your shepherd. Thanks be to God, we have this essential worker who has never taken a second off working for you, leading you and guiding you because you are his essential little lamb. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. We will continue with the created me.
continue with our prayer from the church. Lord God, maker and preserver of all, we praise and thank you for all you give us day after day. We are not worthy of the mercies you show us. May the word we have heard take root in our hearts and bear fruit in our lives, and may it encourage us to shine as lights in this sinful world. Heavenly Father, protect us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, the pain of disease, and the perils of the devil. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are confused, and give comfort to all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, let there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, and disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Protect those who travel by land, sea, and air. We pray especially that you keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless those who serve you at this place. Give them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. all these requests before you, dear Lord, and ask you to hear us. But above all, we give ourselves to you, that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Take what we have, gracious God, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our possessions and offerings, and use this to your glory. We ask this for Jesus' sake. In his name we are confident to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our next hymn. Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus.
We continue with prayer and the benediction. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll conclude our worship this morning with our closing hymn, Have No Fear, Little Flock. Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church. Uh, we still have many ways for you to connect to God's Word and listen to the voice of your shepherd this week. Pastor Peeper is still putting out daily uh, devotions are online. Uh, you can check those out on our website, gvelc.com, which many of you are probably on right now. There's also daily chapels for the children that will be continuing through the end of the year, and I will be hosting a Bible class on Facebook at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening. So make sure you check those things out. Uh, stay in God's Word. Keep listening to the voice of your shepherd. And may God be with you till we see each other again. God bless you.